My name is Alistair Lee, and in this video, I'm going to walk through the new Event Analytics dashboard in Adobe Connect. You can find the dashboard with your event reports. So here on my homepage, I'm going to scroll down to my events section. And because we're looking at reports, I'm going to click on my past events and then click on the reports icon for this particular event. The event analytics dashboard is here at the top of my event reports on the first page, and it supplements some of the existing reports that we've already got, like the conversion funnel, the registration reports, the content reports. But today we're going to look at the event analytics dashboard. So I'm going to click on go to dashboard and that opens up the dashboard in a new tab. The event analytics dashboard is divided up into four different sections. First, starting with engagement, next interactions, participant activity, and download reports. And even though we have a download reports section, you'll notice the ability to download the appropriate report as we're looking at each one of these sections. So I can download the engagement summary right from the engagement section. Let's take a quick look at this. We're starting off here with engagement, and at the top, I can see my key metrics. How many people registered for my event, how many attended, and how many of those were highly engaged or moderately engaged. Next to that, I can see the average watch duration in minutes. We're talking a lot about engagement, especially in the engagement section. If you'd like to learn more about how engagement scores are calculated in Adobe Connect, you can click on this info icon. And there's a link here that takes you to some documentation on how we calculate those engagement scores. They're the same scores that you'll see in a live session with the engagement dashboard that sits in your backstage area. And in fact, that's what we're pulling out here. The engagement over time is the next part of this report. The green line chart here shows me my average level of engagement for each minute of my session. Below that, the pink line shows me my average attendance over time. And then below that, I can see which layout I was on for each of these different sections. And that's really important information because it allows me to correlate the different layouts and the activities that we were doing with the level of engagement during my session. Be above all of this, I can see the timestamp for each of the different sections that I'm hovering over, the average engagement score for that section, the number of attendees in the room at that point, as well as the layout I was on at that minute as well. So this allows me to see here, I can see a drop in engagement after I was on my slides layout for quite some time, and then that engagement going up once I moved to a poll layout. So we added some interaction that increased the level of engagement in my session, and I can see that now after the fact by looking at my engagement scores over time. Below the engagement over time section, we've got an attendees interactions section. This shows me an aggregate level of all of the interactions in the session. How many people answered at least one poll question or asked a question in the Q&A pod? How many people added a chat message in a chat pod or clicked a link in a web links pod or downloaded a file in a files pod? There's a quick link here to go to the interactions section. You can also do that by clicking on interactions over here in the side panel. And this interaction section is divided up into two different tabs, starting here with the polls tab, which will show me all of my polls, and then other interactions, which will show me interactions around Q&A, files, web links, and reactions. Let's start by looking at the polls here, and we're bringing in all of the different poll questions from the session. So I can see here a multiple answer poll where people could respond with more than one option, more than one response. So I can see how many responses I received, how many users responded to the poll, and how long that poll was open for. I was using a preview version. I didn't close my poll, so I'm not seeing that time. But you'll see how long your poll was available for participants to interact with. Below that, I can see the answer distribution of all of the different poll responses. That's a multiple answer poll. Below that, we next used a short answer poll. And I can see the top four or five responses here in the interaction section. But if I'd like to see all of the responses, I can click on view all responses. And that will open up a modal window with 
hundreds of responses or thousands if you've got lots of people in your room. I can always see how many responses we received and how long this poll was available for. And below that, we've got a multiple choice poll and more multiple answer and short answer polls. I can see all of those poll distributions directly from the interaction section. Next, let's click on the other interactions tab, and that will show me the Q&A metrics at the top. So this is the Q&A pod in Adobe Connect. We can see how many questions were asked in that pod. If we had any questions that we left unanswered, how, how many attendees asked questions, and if we had some participants that asked more than one question, that means they were probably very engaged, maybe a top prospect for a marketing webinar, we can highlight them here as well. We can also see the average time taken to answer a question in the Q&A pod. Below those metrics, we can see metrics around our web links pod and our files pod. How many links we made available, how many people clicked each one of those links, and up here at the top, we can see how many people clicked at least one link, and if there were any links launched automatically by the host of a session, that will also show up here. Below that, we can see similar information for files that we made available through a files pod in Adobe Connect. We can see how many people downloaded each of the different files that we made available. And finally, in this interaction section, we can see reactions, what are often called status options in Adobe Connect. Things like setting your status to agree or disagree is a really easy and fast way to add interaction during a session. And we're bringing those reports out here into the reaction section so I can see how many people set their status and the distribution of those reactions or status options here in the reactions section. Next, we'll move on to the participant activity. This is the participant section, and I can order this by engagement level. So I can see my highest engaged participants at the top, or I can click the arrow here and sort this by engagement for the lowest engaged people here at the top. In addition to engagement level, I can see their name, their email address, how much of the session they attended, how many polls they responded to, how many files they downloaded, how many links they clicked, and how many questions they asked during the session. And of course, I can download all of this in a CSV file to bring into Excel or whatever spreadsheet application I'm using. Here's another link to learn more about how we're calculating that engagement score. Speaking of downloading reports, that is the next section of the engagement dashboard. And this gives me a centralized hub to download all of the reports that we've seen across all of those different sections so far. My engagement summary, participant activity, poll responses, Q&A, web links and files, participant reactions, as well as chat, which will give me a chat log. I can download each one of these individually by clicking on the download icon. And there's a handy link at the top that lets me download all of these reports as a single zip package that I can download to my file system. And that's a quick look at the new event analytics dashboard in Adobe Connect. Thanks for your time.